December 9th, 2022. I'm Dr. Steve Unger. Here we have patient number one, female, mid-20s to late-20s, no vital signs. Cause of death, strangulation. I will administer five milliliters of test batch alpha, the results of which should yield life. Anyone up there's listening. Please let this work. Such a beautiful place. Wow, look at that. That moth is so amazing. The moth's a great mimic. You get to hide from predators, some moths can evolve to look like insects, such as a wasp or even a tarantula. Okay, are you, are you telling me that can turn into a tarantula? Yes. Hey, look it up on the internet if you don't believe me. So gross, yet oddly beautiful. There were people who were like moths, and this body of ours was only the beginning. What do you mean? 
Okay. Well, before it becomes a moth, a caterpillar has these transformative cells hidden within its body. And once it enters the cocoon, those transformative cells are released and it can become whatever it needs to survive. Who knows? Maybe we have those same transformative cells within us. And all we need to do is wake them up. Then we can turn into some strange creature. In fact, uh, I think, uh, I think, um, I think I'm turning into one now. Um, uh, 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 uh. What? <laughs> I'm coming for you now, darling. Coming for you, darling. Ah. Darlene, I have loved you since the first moment I've ever saw you. I'm the poet, but this is as romantic as I thought it was in my head. You've been so patient with me. I was through med school. You stood by my side when I couldn't even stand to be by myself. I can't imagine spend you the rest of my life with anyone else but you. I promise to love you, cherish you, and support you, and care for you. I will absolutely treasure you forever and ever if you promise to marry me. Darlene, will you marry me? Yes, of course. <laughs> Are there any side effects that we should know about? She'll be tired. The pain medication will help with the headaches. The shot I'll administer will help with the nausea. You'll feel a little pinch, okay? As a hospice nurse, I'm here not only for your wife, but your entire family through the last stages of her life. You mentioned you have a daughter, correct? Uh, Lily. Lily. That's a beautiful name. Thank you. I'll help you and Lily get through this process. I'll make sure your wife is as comfortable as possible. Now I've laid out some pamphlets that detail everything from symptoms to be aware of, as well as coping with family stress. Are there any other family members that should be present for these conversations? Uh, her parents passed away a while ago. Um, she has a brother, but he's not much into family. No worries. 
What about your occupation? Um, I do research for a cosmetics lab. So my hours are pretty much nine to five. <laughs> Just know I'm here to help, for as little or as much as possible. It will help you and your daughter in this situation. There's no timetable when we can pinpoint when your wife will slip into a coma or pass. It can be weeks, months, so the sooner you address these things, the better. Do you have any questions so far? No. Um, thank you for everything, Betty. I promised to always take care of you. You are more than you know. I could have done something more to prevent all of this. None of this is because you failed at something. I'm lucky to have married you. I bought this home and life to our beautiful daughter. I'm blessed. Mom? Dad? Speaking of... In here, sweetie. What are you all doing? <sighs> of course not, sweetie. Mommy's just a little tired today. You're always tired, Mommy. That's nothing new. Hey, why don't you tell us what you did in school today? Stars. Stars? What about the stars? There are a bajillion million of stars in the sky, and the sun is a big star. That's right. Good job. Can we look at the stars tonight? And we need to let Mommy take a nap, and then we can look at the stars later. Okay? Sweet dreams, Mommy. Hey, kiddo. How would you feel about two of us taking a trip? Just us two. Where? Where do you want? New Mexico. It's odd. Why New Mexico? My teacher is from there, and she said you can see tons of stars. All right, then. New Mexico. How come Mommy want to come? Well, Mommy's not going to be able to do everything with us. Sometimes it's just going to be you and me. How do you feel about that? About what? If it was just you and me? My friend at school has two dads. Okay, well, I don't think you're going to get another dad. But what about a dad and no mom? No, that would be weird. Yeah. Come on, let's go wake up mom for dinner, okay? On. It's a little cold outside. Where's mom? Mom is still asleep. Still lazy, mom. Your mom needs a lot of sleep these days. Okay? Okay. All right. Go get your backpack.
And this must be Lily. Lily, this is Betty. Now she's going to make Mommy feel better when we're away from home. Nice to meet you, Lily. Are you going to help my mom with her headaches and from getting tired all the time? Oh, well, I'm going to try. We'll see, OK? You off to school? Yeah. My dad walks me every day before he goes to work. Well, that's nice of him. Such a good daddy is. Mm, I guess he's OK. Hey. <laughs> Darlene's inside asleep. You have the code to get in? I do. Well, you have a good day. And maybe after school, I'll meet you with some freshly baked cookies. <laughs> I like her. Mm-hmm. Come on. <laughs> All right. Bye. Thanks, Betty. Steve. Amigo. Are you all right? Let me show you this. Steve, this, this looks promising. Are these using the stem cell samples we got in yesterday? We're trying a different approach from our previous attempts. I definitely see a lot of cell regeneration there. I think we should show it to Dr. Barry. Use the neural stem cell samples we received from St. Louis. Yes, sir. Just the neural. Well, actually, I added embryonic cells as well. Robert? Let me talk to Steve. Alone. Where the fuck did you get embryonic cells? We, we received the package from St. Louis that contained both the neural and the embryonic stem cells. So you just up and decided to research with them without my approval. You like having a job? Making money? I don't know where you're planning to go with this. Stop wasting my fucking time trying to play savior by creating cures for diseases we have no business treating. I make money to run this place, pay you a salary by developing cosmetic therapies to sell to the rich people in America who have the money to pay for these treatments. Yeah, and we can continue to do that, but we can also develop groundbreaking treatments for lots of diseases. We, we have the capacity. You developed the cure for, oh, let's say something small, chicken pox. Great. No kid in America ever catches the disease again and it becomes obsolete. Guess who needs to buy your medication now? Nobody. And how much do you make when nobody needs your medication? Not a goddamn cent. There was never going to be a cure for cellulite as long as people enjoy eating. Goddamn Russian scientists are testing on humans and making a killing. It's all I want to do here and make you and I some money. Focus on the tasks I give you, and you keep your job. Yes, sir. I give your daughter. So what did he say? Nothing. Just wants me to keep making plastic faces for rich people. Look, Steve, I'm, I'm with you. I, I wish our jobs were more rewarding than they are. 
But it's a job, man. I'm sorry about Darlene. I pray for your family every night. But it truly is in God's hands, my friend. You know, one thing he said that was right. As long as people keep getting rich off medications, then there's no incentive to find a cure. I mean, that's it. Keep the sick medicated. Keep the profits rolling in. Something that's got to change, all right? Our healthcare system, they're robbing us blind. We're just getting played by the system. I mean, as scientists, it's our responsibility to find a fix. Because if we don't, then nothing will ever change. I agree, but there are rules. Morals that we have to abide by, and if we don't, then we're no different. Are we? Hey, I'll keep praying for both of us. And give Darlene my best, huh? and it's December. And they tell us global warming isn't real. I know this is Texas, but come on. Well, moving on to something that is real, did you hear about this strange story? An eight-year-old boy bitten by a wasp while vacationing with his parents in Costa Rica returned home deathly sick, but within a few days recovered from his illness and miraculously cured from a lifelong battle of his multiple sclerosis disease. Isn't that amazing? However, weeks after his stunning recovery, the boy slipped into a coma and eventually died. Doctors are still puzzled about his miraculous recovery and are trying to understand more about the boy's illness. They've sent cell samples to various labs Sorry. across the states for further research in the hopes to learn more and possibly find Sorry. a cure for MS. Have a nice day! Hey, how's my little one? Good. Good. Mm. Oh. oh, what's going on in here? Well, good evening, Mr. Elgar. Just Steve is fine. Good evening, Steve. Hey. Mm. Hey, how are you feeling? Good. Betty just waited a bit until you got home. She cooked dinner for us. Oh, that was nice. Thank you, Betty. It's no problem at all. I even made Miss Lily some homemade mac and cheese. Yummy, right? A lot better than that box stuff you make, Dad. No oh. offense. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, no offense, huh? The things they teach kids in school these days. <laughs> well, I better get going. You guys enjoy the dinner. Bye, Lily. Hey, Betty, um, why don't you stay? That is, unless you have other dinner plans. I can't say this single woman has any plans. So, Lily, do you mind if I stay? Do you have kids, Betty? No, I don't. Why? God didn't bless me with the ability to. Why would God do that? Lily, it's not nice to ask personal questions like that. No, it's, it's okay. God has a plan for all of us. And we 
all play a role in each other's lives. And besides, I'm here to help with you and your family. Help us make yummy mac and cheese and cookies? Exactly. So what have you discovered? The fix. No, no, Th this isn't right. Wait, wait, what is it right about it? You're tampering with human DNA here. I mean, you're regenerating cells faster than anything I've ever seen possible. <laughs> How did you even do this? You remember those cell samples we got from St. Louis? Yeah, the ones you showed me the other day. Okay, well, those samples contain the cells of an eight-year-old boy who died from a disease contracted from a wasp bite in Costa Rica. Right, but before he died, that same disease cured his multiple sclerosis. Right, so there's something there that we can tap into. And I am close to getting it. This is dangerous stuff, man. You don't know what this can do long term. We don't even do that kind of research here. Look, we have them now, okay? We can make something of these, okay? 
we run a test. We inject the virus and follow it up with this serum. And we could come very close to finding a cure. A cure for what? A cure for anything. Everything. Can you even imagine what that will be like? I know why you're doing this, okay? I get it. But even if you did go through with any of this, this would never pass through any FDA regulations. Who or how would you even test? We don't even have that authority here. I mean, look at these mutations that are occurring in this sample. You can't fathom the consequences that could result from testing. Walk away from this. Really sorry I missed your dance recital, Lily. I've been working really hard to make mommy better. And you do want mommy to get better, don't you? You know, Betty, I really can't thank you enough for everything that you've been doing around here, all your help. <laughs> I can't even imagine what life would be like here without you. You're welcome. Did you all eat dinner? Yeah, we did. Mm. Are you hungry? Mm, no. No, I'm just tired. Mm, this medication makes me so sleepy. <sighs> Sorry for being mad at you. Are you mad at me? Before. When? For getting me at dance rehearsal. Hey, I didn't forget about you. I was just late. I know. I need to be more tough and not such a baby anymore. I know Mommy's sick and we need to be tough for her. I need this for you to protect us from being sick. You promise to wear it? I'll never take it off. Good night, sweetheart. Sweet dreams, Daddy. Earth to Steve. Hey, beautiful. Your work allow you to take all this equipment home with you? I think borrow would be a better word than take. So what are you so obsessed with out here that I don't see you as much? I've had a breakthrough in my research. I just need to dedicate more time to it. Look, I promise, I'm going to fix you. I'm so close Steve, to finally finding- Steve. Steve, all I want is you and Lily to spend whatever time is left with me. Okay, it's, it's too late for any of this, Steve. <laughs> no, I'll make more time. Look, all I have to do is perfect it, and, and it might 
No, it will cure you. I, I just have to hurry. Because I won't lose you. Okay, I understand that, um, that this is your way of dealing with the situation. To fix it. I don't need you to fix me. I need you to just, just lay down with me and accept this together. Because I'm trying to keep it together. I'm scared. I'm scared of not leaving a perfect home. I'm, I'm, I'm scared of... I'm scared of Lily growing up with anger. I'm scared of you being lonely for the rest of your life. But also of not remembering me if you do move on. No. No, that's not gonna happen. No, that's not gonna happen. You wanna know why? Because you are not going anywhere. Today is December 6, 2022. I'm Dr. Stephen Unger, and today I will proceed with the first test of batch alpha on subject A, mouse. Subject A is free of ailment and disease, so I will administer a lethal virus, and upon death, will then administer two milliliters of test batch alpha, the results of which should return subject A back to life. Subject A is now deceased. So we'll administer two milliliters of test batch alpha.
<laughs> After a two milliliter dosage of test batch alpha, subject A has returned to life. All bodily functions appear normal.
be okay. If you can fix her. Maybe she can fix her. the name my mom gave me. Minerva. I mean, what is that? But my mom's a hippie. You know, she's into all that natural stuff, so it's just like her to name someone something so odd. That's why people call me Minnie. Because I'm so tiny. But, I mean, I think I'm starting to like it a little bit more. I looked it up, and it means goddess of wisdom. It's not too bad, right? It's kind of cool. So, uh... Are you going to kiss me or what? <laughs> I'm sorry.
What are you doing, Daddy? Get out of here, Lily. This isn't a place to be playing around. Hey, no thanks. I'm just taking out some old trash. Well, Lily came in crying. I just wanted to see if everything was okay. Everything's okay. I'm good. That looks really heavy. Yeah, it's... I'm good. You should probably go inside and, uh... see if Lily needs any help. Steve. I'm sorry. Did I wake you? Kiss me. You look tired. Not defeated. 
That's what I'm afraid of. Come lay with me. Promise me that whatever it is you're doing, it won't jeopardize everything we've built so far. I, I promise. How you feeling, kiddo? Don't lose this one. Yeah, sorry. I must have misplaced the other one. I promise to take better care of this one, okay? I can't keep letting you do this. You can't play God. What are you gonna do? Report me? Listen, as a friend, I know you're hurting. And you're trying everything that you can do to help, but you- can Hey, you help. have no- idea what I am going through, okay? Because you do not have the sense of urgency that I have as a husband and as a father who'll do anything he can to keep his family together. Not this way. Whatever you're doing, it's not controlled. It's not regulated. I have to stop. <laughs> Stay out of it or you're going to get hurt. <clears throat> Stay out of it. for the public's help on identifying this man or the whereabouts of Minerva Wilson. Are you in there? I'm going home for the evening. Call me if you need me, okay? Thank <laughs> you. 
Steve? Yeah, I'm here. You should really get some rest. I know, I'm just... I feel like I haven't seen you very much. I know. Just <laughs> promise me that when things get closer, you'll just lay down with me more, please. Hey, there's going to be plenty of time for that later. I promise. Mm. All right. Come on, Betty. Come on. Daddy. 
Nothing, sweetie. I just got some work in there. I've got some dangerous equipment that I don't want you to touch. So don't ever go in there, okay? Okay. Promise me, Lily, never go in there. I promise. Good. All right. Let's get you to school. <sighs> Fascinating, isn't it? What have you done, Steve? You know how we got the flu shot? Virologists in Michigan in the early 40s deliberately infected patients at a mental hospital with the influenza virus. After some trial and error and dozens of death, voila, got a vaccine. You know, I'm this close. This close to developing something that will change the world. And people will look back at all of this and say that it was necessary to advance health, science, Sacrifice of the few save the many. Now, there, there's going to be some casualties along the way. But they are just as much a part of this discovery as I am. <laughs> I see that now. The work I'm doing to save lives, to keep families together. It will end suffering. You don't think she's suffering? She. She promised to help me any way that she could. And she is helping me. She's helping my family. She's helping your family. She is helping millions of others out there. I'll pray for you. Well, save your breath. <laughs> Welcome back to the land of the living. How are you feeling? 
Truly. I'm dying to know. You know, I always told you that I would succeed. You could have been here, right alongside me, changing the world. It's too bad that you won't get to see it. Sorry you had to see that, Betty. Really, I am. But don't worry. You won't suffer the same fate. I promise. Betty. I sent her home. We don't need nurses anymore. What's wrong? I don't know. I... Betty's gone. I don't know what you're doing. I... I don't know where Lily is. Hey. Honey. It's okay. Lily is in the other room having dinner. Everything hurts. Hey. hey. <laughs> this time next week, we're going to be dancing.
Test subject shows no further signs of development. No pupils. Body motion still irregular, agitated. No vocal capabilities. Still no signs of basic human communication. I will continue study for two more days. If no further development, I will terminate test subject. doing are those security cameras
Oh.